Hey guys, Kevin from Epic Gardening. We've got less than 24 hours since our last video in this series and boom, kale popping out like a total boss right here. And as you can see, everything's thriving. We're not getting any, any wilting or any stretching going on. They're getting good sun. But what I really wanted to show you in this video is the benefit of starting in hydroponics. Look at all those roots. Look at the tap roots just popping down into the water, growing completely, not completely, but way faster than they would in soil. Because soil, there's nothing for them to drop into. Normally, they'd start twirling around, they'd get a little bit root bound. You might even actually kill the plant because it would run itself out of water or it might run out of oxygen. There's a bunch of different ways that the plant could die in a uh, soil seed starting method. So the cool part and the next step is to actually get this water properly pH'd because I just use normal tap water here and then add a little bit of nutrient, get some, get some food back into these plants because they're really living right now off of the nutrients found in the leaves of their cotyledons which is their seed leaves. So they're really living off that for, for now, and if I keep them going like this, they're going to basically cannibalize themselves. That's not what we want to happen. We want to have some really cool, really beautiful, really healthy plants that we can transplant into a hydroponic system, or even out in soil. So the next step of this video is going to be pHing the water, adding a light nutrient solution, and giving our plants something to eat. So we'll get back to that in just one second. All right, we're back. Now the next step that we need to take is to pH our water because we used perfectly normal tap water. So I've got right here, this is a Blue Lab pH pen, been using it for a while, really like this. I'll put a review up pretty shortly about it. But all you got to do is plop it in the water, give it a quick shake to get any air bubbles out of the way, and then check your pH. And you can see we're at 8.2, which is a little bit basic. And we need to be around the 5.5 to 6 range, ideally probably 5.7, 5.8. So that means we need some pH down. So I'm going to grab some of that and toss it in real quick. Okay, as you can see, pH is down at 5.8 now. I use General Hydroponics pH down, pretty uh, standard pH down. Most people have it. And just to talk about adjusting pH for a second, do it in short increments. If you don't know exactly what you should be putting in volume-wise, do it, it, just add a couple drops, mix it around, test again, then add some more, and then add some more until you get back down to where you want to go. And then make a note. You know, As always, keeping data on your grows is very important. So make a note of how much water is in the reservoir and then how much pH down it took because generally... If you start at the same pH, let's say you always start at around 8.5 out of your tap, and you have the same amount of water, it's going to take the same amount of pH down to get it to that level. So you won't have to waste time doing it step by step. So the next step, once we've got our pH in the right zone, as we do here at 5.8, is to add our nutrients. Now I've got General Hydroponics Flora Grow, really standard beginner nutrient. And as you can see, for cutting and seedlings, it's about one-fourth teaspoon a gallon. There's probably about two gallons in there. And as you can see, one teaspoon is five milliliters. So what I've done, on calculation-wise, that'd be under five milliliters, if you think about it. One-fourth of one teaspoon times five is really under. It's almost nothing, essentially. So I found that adding a little bit extra, they generally are really conservative on that label. So I add about 15 milliliters of nutrient to a two gallon solution, sometimes even a little bit more, but right now I'm just going to go ahead and add the 15. We'll dump it in there and you're going to want to give it a good stir, but that's really pretty much all you have to do for this next step. Get it into a good pH range, add a light nutrient, and then let them keep going because at this point they're going to stop becoming seedlings and they're going to start growing into true plants, which is where we want them to be. So that's pretty much it for step number three. I'm going to keep updating this, and I hope to see you in the next chapter. Keep growing, guys. Kevin from Epic Gardening out.